My name is Paul Vays. Uh, I'm the director of bone marrow transplants at Great Ormond Street. This unit is now the largest in the UK and it specialises in children with immune deficiencies. We treat children along with our sister centre in Newcastle and we're probably one of the biggest centres in the world uh, with the greatest expertise in the world. First of all, you have to find the right donor. Uh, so it's not like having a heart or kidney transplant. If you want a stem cell transplant, then the stem cells have to be very closely matched. So uh, for anybody uh, in the UK looking for a donor, you have to look at roughly 100,000 random people to find a suitable match. That is the situation for most children. We have a, a matched sibling probably for one in four or one in five patients. Bone marrow transplant is a very difficult time for the child, actually, and the whole family. Um, the child is going to require a long hospital admission where they're very restricted in what they can do. For a time, they have absolutely no immune defence, so they need to be protected almost in a bubble. They can only eat certain types of food, and they're, they're basically kept in their room for a number of weeks. When they go home, seeing a friend can be a big thing. The friend needs to be well. Uh, even a common cold virus in the wrong time uh, can be life-threatening. Additionally, if one of the brothers and sisters is the donor, uh, for a few days in the transplant, both children are in hospital, and that's a very stressful situation for, for the parents. We now do something different from what we did five or ten years ago. Nowadays, because transplant has become much more successful, for CGD, as long as you can find a matched donor, we tend to do it much earlier. We sometimes transplant children the first few months of life, but usually the diagnosis is made, if it's an early one, within a few years of life. Uh, so yes, we're talking very young children, and the idea of that is transplanting the child while they're well. If you wait, it's likely that the child will develop an infection, and that can make transplantation more complicated. Most children with CGD will need a transplant, then we now think that we should do it soon, when they're young and when they're well, because that will give them the best chance of, a, of an easy transplant and a successful transplant. The current success rates with our best donor, which is a matched sibling donor, are excellent. They're 90% and they've been like that for 10 or 15 years. What's improved in recent times is the success of a matched unrelated donor. So that's when you don't have a sibling donor, which is the situation for most children with CGD. And those success rates are also 80 to 90%. The remaining question is what happens if you don't have a matched donor, but a closely matched donor. Uh, for instance, what we say 9 on 10 rather than 10 on 10. And, and the early data from the first 10 or 15 patients with 9 out of 10 matched donors seems to be also good. Um, so, matched donors we will do a closer diagnosis. Um, anything else we might just wait a little bit and just see how the clinical situation evolves. We say in general that if we do 10 transplants for the same disease, one time out of 10 that process will go wrong and the child will die. It's either the graft fights the patient or the reverse, which is rejection. The child picks up the wrong infection on the wrong day, which we can't treat, or one of the drugs, the chemotherapy drugs that we use in transplant, is too strong for that particular child. But the reason we do transplant, that if you do nothing, um, and you wait five, ten years, then some children will die from their disease itself. One of the things we used to worry about long-term following bone marrow transplant was the long-term side effects of the chemotherapy we've given. Um, and they used to produce uh, infertility, growth problems, second tumours, there's a whole list. But with the modern chemotherapy agents, what we call reduced toxicity transplants, uh, it may be that these are very much reduced so that not only are the patients cured, but they'll become adults normal in every sense. In the past, transplant in adults with CGD has been problematic. One, because they're older, but mainly because by the time they're an adult, they've picked up a lot of complications, so they've got lots of infections on board, which makes transplant more difficult. But if you are an adult, and you've reached adulthood with a disease, um, uh, 
transplant is a bit more challenging, but actually in recent years has become easier because we've been able to develop reduced intensity or reduced toxicity transplants. It's a different time to have a transplant as an adult with CGD, and certainly we'd be much happier transplanting a 20-year-old, even with problems these days, than we were, say, 10 years ago. One of the big things that can go wrong in transplant is this thing called graft versus host disease. And as the title suggests, it is the graft, in other words, the stem cell donor, fighting the host, the patient. So it appears as a rash or diarrhea or liver problems. Uh, usually we can treat it. The treatment's fairly simple, just some steroids, but just occasionally uh, it can get out of hand. And in fact, it can, that can be a fatal disease if we can't turn it off. Fortunately, it doesn't happen that often. Most times it's treatable. Many exciting developments in transplant for CGT. The outcomes are much, much better, almost year by year. Um, but the cure rate's still not 100%. Um, to achieve that, we need to do two things initially. One is we have to be able to find a very closely or a closely matched donor for everyone. This means we have to increase the size of our panel of donors. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to replace some of our toxic chemotherapy drugs with less toxic antibodies and other specific therapies so that we don't have any mortality from the transplant procedure itself. We're a very close community throughout the world and once it's developed somewhere, um, then of course that, that procedure can easily be spread throughout the rest of the world. So a cure in one country can become a cure everywhere very quickly.